Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on whereabouts you are in the world. My name is Gareth Westwood, I'm with a company called Quietly Confident Technology Limited, uh, and today I'm giving you a video uh, talking about creating VLANs and VLAN setup on a, specifically on a Draytech router. So uh, I was at a, a, an IT conference recently, and, uh, and one of the other attendees there, a friend of mine, uh, was asking about how to set up VLANs on Draytech routers and whether it's possible and whether it's secure and all that sort of stuff. So um, I just thought, rather than trying to explain that over the phone, uh, I give them a quick video uh, and then we can put this out on the internet and then everybody gets to uh, to gain from the knowledge. So uh, so yeah, so this is for a specific person realistically, you know who you are, but hopefully the information um, is helpful for anybody that sees it. Um, so the scenario that we've got is that it's an existing setup, uh, router's already in place, internet's configured, all of that sort of good stuff's done. So I'm not worrying about any of that initial setup, um, but what we are going to do is we're going to go and create some VLANs because um, what we're looking at is being able to separate some of the stuff from, from the rest of the network. So it may be, for example, that you want to separate your work kit from the rest of your network. Maybe that you want to set up a guest network and you want to make sure that's isolated. Um, or uh, maybe you want to get the kids' stuff off separate so that you can kind of turn that on, on and off or something like that. But anyway, so we're going to do that using VLANs. Um, now, keep in mind that VLANs are not the be-all and end-all. They are not... Um, you know, impervious to, uh, to to any sort of uh, attacks and mitigations. So whilst they are an extra layer in your security, um, they shouldn't be the only layer of protection that you've got. So um, we always talk about um, security as a layered approach, like an onion. You know, there should be many, many layers. So uh, VLANs can be one of those layers, but there should be others. Uh, so we will... Um, switch across to this view now, uh, not that view, no, we're going to go to uh, this one here. Uh, so the setup that we've got here is a Draytech uh, 2865AX uh, and that's connected via this blue cable here, if you can see on the uh, on the close shot, uh, to a Dream Machine Pro. doesn't really matter what it's connected to, but just so you know that's where it's going to. Um, it's then also connected via this grey cable, which is in port 1, uh, to a uh, flat configured uh, switch. So that switch has got no config on it, it's just kind of a, a DOM switch, basically. Um, and my PC is then connected via this white cable here. So the reason that we've got two switches is that the second one um, is configured as per this little section in the middle here. Um, port 1 is configured to accept VLANs 200 and 300. So 200 and 300 go in on, uh, on port 1 and it will distribute VLAN 200 on port 7 and VLAN 300 on port 8. Now, if that doesn't make sense, it probably doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm not going into exactly how you configure the VLANs on the, uh, um, on the, on the switches here. This is more about configuring the, uh, the uh, Draytech bit of kit. Um, but that's just, just so you know, that's how we've got this configured. Um, so, and, and I've got a, just a note of the steps here. There's not a lot of steps to this. Um, so you go to LAN general setup and you'll notice that you can't actually do anything at all. We go to VLANs, enable it, tick some settings, don't need to bother restarting, back to LAN, enable some more bits, and it's all good. So uh, so actually, we might as well just uh, kick into that, haven't we? So I think we'll just go with uh, admin and admin on here. Um, I will just you know highlight the fact that, yeah, I know I've got the default password on that, and yes, this is not using HTTPS over here. Um, uh, we're on firmware version 4.4.1. I've no idea whether that's the most recent version or not. But the point of this video is not to secure the Draytech router. It's not this is a best practice thing. Um, I'm assuming the router's already set up. Um, but we'll just do a quick... You can see that we've already got the default setup on the uh, on the Draytech is that we're on 192.168.1.1. And that's what my computer is currently talking through. So we're coming up at 11. Uh, and the WAN side of this is connected, as I say, to the Dream Machine, which is currently giving out 172.16.0. Um, so that's that setup. So first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to go to LAN, we're going to go to General Setup, and we're going to see that like we can't enable any of this stuff. So we can see that there's lots of other options here, but we can't do anything with it. So we're then going to go across to LAN. We're going to enable the VLANs. Now this then starts to look a little bit intimidating. Um, 
I would ignore all the numbers down the left hand side of here because I think that makes things confusing. Um, just know that they're different lines, different lines are doing different things. So we've enabled this. We're going to say that on port 1, 4, 5, and SSID 1, we want LAN 1 to appear. So LAN 1, uh, if you remember back, if we just uh, OK that, LAN 1 is our 192.168.1.1. So we want that to be available on ports 1, 4, 5, and via the wireless SSID 1. What we're then going to do is we're going to say that we want port 2 to have LAN 2 and port 3 to have LAN 3. Now this is a very, very basic setup at the moment. So we're not touching any of this bit over here. We're ignoring that for now. We're just saying port 1, 4 and 5 are going to be um, are going to be LAN 1. Ports 2 and ports 3 are going to be LAN 2 and LAN 3 respectively. So we're going to hit OK on that. We're going to go back to here. You'll now notice that LANs 2 and 3, because we've got them selected, we can enable. So we're going to hit enable there and there. And we're going to hit OK on that. And I am going to reboot the router this time, just because that seems sensible. We'll give that a few seconds to restart. Okay, so you can see that's restarted. Uh, these pings, I didn't explain this earlier, but I've got this left-hand window is uh, is going out to the gateway to the uh, to the Dream Machine. That's that's the next thing upstream, um, and uh, one dot one is the Draytek router itself. So just showing here that we can ping the gateway, but we can also ping. Uh, the router itself. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to unplug a network cable. So I've unplugged from port 1, which is where I was, and I'm going to plug into port 2. We'll just wait for a couple of request timeouts to happen. We'll plug into port 2. I'm going to do an IP config release. and renew and you can see there that we now have an IP address of 192.168.2.10 so we've got a new IP address oh I didn't specify what we were on before but <laughs> we were on 1.1.something dot, uh, one dot before so we're now on 2.10 uh, so again we'll pull that out and we'll go into port 3 Couple of timeouts there, just to make sure we're working. Release and renew. Perfect. And as if by magic, we now have a three address. Now, what you'll notice is that because these VLANs are isolated, we can still ping the outside world. We can still ping the uh, the, the the upstream router, but we can't ping the 1.1 addresses anymore. Um, and that's because by default the Draytech will isolate those so you can't ping from one subnet or one VLAN across to another where well, you can't you can't get data from one to another um, so that's cool and that's kind of exactly what I want to happen um, and I will just for the sake of completeness we'll go into port 4 Should put us back on a there we go one two one six eight one address and similarly into port five okay so that's all doing what we want it to um, so what we'd really like though back into port once what we'd really like potentially is say um, you know this works fine so this setup um, you you plug your switch into port 2 everything that's then plugged into that switch is going to be on uh, VLAN 200 in this case uh, 192.168.1.1 um, 
dot two dot something. Or you plug your switch into port three and it's on three, uh, VLAN 300. So that's awesome. But what if you have different devices that need to be connected to different VLANs down the end of a cable? So let's say, for example, uh, you've got a, uh, an office down the bottom of the garden. So you want to run one cable from your router that's at the front of the house down to the garden and then in the garden you want to have uh, some IoT stuff, so some smart light switches and a TV, uh, but you also want to have a couple of bits of work kit that are separated out. So in that instance what we actually want is we want VLAN 200 and 300 to both go down this cable and both get to this switch. And this is where VLAN tagging comes in. So if I just, uh, no I don't want to unplug anything yet. We're going to log back into the router. We're going to say, yes, we know we've got a bad password still. We're going to go back to LAN and we're going to go to VLAN. So what we're now going to do is we are going to configure this bit on the right-hand side here. So we're going to say that we want, and again, ignore what this says. It's just bloody confusing. On port 5, we want... LAN 2 to be available on VLAN 200 and also on port 5 we want LAN 3 to be available on VLAN 300. Now we could also, again I wasn't necessarily going to go into detail on, on how to do this but we could, oh, let's do this the right way around, we could say that we want SSID 3 to also be on LAN 3 and we could have SSID 2 also in there, so we can do that as well. Uh, I'm going to leave that off because I'm not actually configuring that. Uh, we're going to say OK. And I'm going to say OK to reboot again because probably good practice to do that. I should probably play some lift music or something now whilst I just sit twiddling my thumbs while it restarts. Okay, so you can see that that's come back up again now and we're pinging the internet as it were and, uh, and we're pinging the gateway um, with how things were plugged in before. But what we're now going to do is we're going to switch across to this, we're going to switch switch to the bottom switch. So we're going to plug that cable in there and we're going to plug this into port 5. Now if you remember what we've just done is on port 5 we've said that we want, um, we've got LAN 1 which has no VLAN associated with it, that's just coming out of port 1 normally. But we've also tagged VLAN 200 and VLAN 300. So they're coming out in as what's called tagged. So they will be hitting this bottom switch. And this bottom switch knows about VLANs and is configured to talk to the VLANs. Uh, we could probably just pull that up and show you that quickly. So here's the switch. And you absolutely will not be able to see that because it's far too small. But we have configured, so VLAN 200 on that port, and VLAN 300 on the last one. So 7 and 8 are VLAN 200 and VLAN 300. So. What we should now get, if I minimise that out of the way. So, if we just look at how we're plugged in, so we should now be getting, um, as we are, an IP address of uh, in the one, no, 192.168.1 range, which we are doing. Uh, and we can ping the outside world and we can see everything. But if we unplug the computer from there and plug it into port 7, move that a couple of seconds. We uh, release and renew that again. We will now get an IP address 
can see there in the 192.168.2 range. And guess what happens if we plug it into the other port? No, the other port, Gareth. <laughs> You've got to plug stuff in the right way around, otherwise it doesn't work. A little release and renew there. And this will now be on 192.168.3. So, um, that's about it, I think. I think we're just going to go back to this view here. We're going to leave that all pink in there. So, you can see that essentially by having... Um, by configuring the VLANs on the router, there's that kind of simple um, simple way of doing it, which was the first bit that we did. Oh, I'm just going to pull that back up again on... No, I'm not, because I can't see it, because I'm on the wrong subnet. <laughs> um, so there was that, that simple, straightforward first bit, which is just enabling VLANs, uh, and then saying which subnet you want on which port, um, and that gives you anything that's connected to that single port on the router will be on that VLAN, so it's all separated out. Um, but it doesn't help you if you need to get two different things from a little bit remote uh, connected to different networks. So that's where the tagging comes in. So you tag one of the ports on multiple VLANs, but then you do need a bit of kit at the other end that also supports the VLANs to then say, ah, oh, we've got 200 and 300 coming in on this port, squirt 200 out on that one and 300 out on that one. Um, and again, for reference, you know, We've got eight ports on this switch. Um, we could have done three of them on 200 and four of them on 300 if we wanted to, or any any combination of that. Um, so yeah, it's nice and flexible. Um, as I say, not to be used as the be all and end all of security, um, but it's a really, really useful tool to segregate things out. Particularly, you know, if you get running an organization and you're getting up to the point where you're running out of IP addresses, maybe separating things out, put your printer separate, uh, split things off by department, move your CCTV off, move your management of all your, your, your LAN equipment, you know, get that all separated out um, onto a separate VLAN. Awesome idea. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, that's going to be a longer video, I think. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you've got any uh, comments, so comments about uh, how, whether the video was good or not, if there's anything else that you'd like me to do, whether it's uh, Draytech related, VLAN related, Unify related, whatever, um, please do shout up and let me know. Um, if you've found the video to be good, a like would be absolutely awesome. Um, and if you're interested in seeing other stuff that I do, then if you could subscribe to the channel, um, then that would also be great. Thank you ever so much for watching. I've been Gareth Westwood, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. <laughs>